Today is Saturday, September 17th, 2022. It is also day 51 of JS and day 425 of WebDev. And today I'm going to do something like I did two days ago, this card UI that when I click on this little plus sign, it adds a new card um, and so on and so on. So I'm going to do this with JavaScript and obviously HTML and CSS. So I'll start here my HTML file. I'm going to say doc type HTML and basically let's say to the browser, hey, I'm writing in HTML5, right, which is the language that we're using. Um, then we have our HTML tags because again, we are writing in HTML and then our main tags are our head and our body tags, which are not that hard to remember because, you know, we all have our, you know, head and body. So it's kind of an easy thing to remember. Um, the head tag is backend information. Um, so, you know, just like your brain, nobody knows what you're thinking. Nobody can see what you're thinking. Just like, you know, the clients who are using, you know, your website doesn't, they don't see this backend information, anything that's in the head, but what they do see is what's in um, what's inside the body tag. So anything you put inside the body tag is what you're going to see on the left side of the screen is what you're going to see on your website. Um, so again, the head tags, the only thing I'm going to write here uh, for now is meta and then name viewport. So I'm targeting the viewport, which is just the screen itself. And then the content of the viewport, specifically the width of the viewport, I'm going to be setting it equal to the device width. So the width of the device that I'm currently using um, with an initial scale of 1.0. Basically what that's saying is, um, hey, uh, about my screen, I need the width to be equal to the to the width of whatever device I'm using. So if I'm on my phone, um, the screen size, the width of my screen of my viewport should be equal to the width of my phone screen is basically what it's saying. And um, with an initial scale of 1.0, right? So it starts at one. Um, and yeah, this is more, mostly for responsiveness. Okay, for the body tag, here we go. A div, right? I'm gonna label it with a class container. Um, and it's going to contain everything on my screen. I'm going to go to CSS, right, and I'm going to just do dot container because that's how we target classes with dots and I'm going to give it a rule. So border is a property and the following values, five pixels, solid and black. So um, solid would be, you know, it could be dotted, right, just kind of the line format. Um, and then black would be the color, right, but I would want a solid line and just five pixels is the thickness of it. And then I would just say height. 100 VH for now, so vertical height of the screen. To get rid of the spacing around the container, I can just go and select everything by using the little star and zero out any default uh, or any margin and padding that comes by default with some browsers. And then um, border box, no, box sizing border box, set that property. And what that's going to do is, first of all, make things a little bit better to work with, like padding and margin. And two, if you're on your phone, it's actually going to um, get rid of any extra spacing around the container, um, which there is on the phone, like if you're on mobile view. Um, but you wouldn't have seen it in the screen on web. Anyway, so then the next thing to do would be to make my grid. So I'll do a div class and grid. And the reason I'm making a grid and not just putting the card within the container is because I would want to center the grid um, on the screen or in the in the container. And I can't do that if I don't have, you know, something around the cards. Like I would like the cards to be centered um, in the screen. And I can't do that because the cards individually are going to have, you know, a display of um, a different thing. Anyway, um, so grid, right? So I'm going to go here just to make things easy. I'll do dot grid, give it a border. Of, let's say five pixels solid black as well um, and I'll be able to see that now inside the grid I'm not gonna give it a height because I'm gonna do my card so I'm gonna do a class of card and this is gonna be my card so my card is going to have let's say div class uh, card content and it's also going to have a thumbnail so I'm gonna do div class thumbnail or thumb, All right? So that's kind of the idea. And just to, you know, get an idea of what we're doing here, let me just give everything a border. So I'll do, right, the card itself. Um, whoops, let me do that over here. So the card, and then I'll also do the card content. And then I'll also do the thumbnail and give them different 
colors so you can see the difference. So I'll do red, blue, green. Okay, and then the thumbnail is going to have, let me just give everything a height for now, maybe 50 pixels. And then I'll give this a height also with 50 pixels, just so you can see what it's, what's going on right now. Okay, so just to summarize, black line is the grid. Um, red line is, no, 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 hold up. The card, yeah. Red line is the card. Green is your thumbnail where your picture's gonna go. And then the blue line is the card content. So um, the idea is to, let me just go ahead and grab that photo here. So I'm gonna right click, copy image address and go back in here. And for the thumbnail, right, I'll just give it a background and just uh, say URL and just paste that URL in there. And then um, just so it appears, right? But I want it to appear a little bit better. So background size cover um, is a rule that's going to make sure that the thumbnail actually you know, covers the entirety of its container, which in this case is a thumbnail. And then definitely what I could do is just grab the card and give that a temporary height for now, specific, specifically a width. Um, let's do 300 pixels, right? So we could see that happening there in a height of 400 pixels. I'll change this later. It's just so we can get an idea of what's happening here. Um, and then the thumbnail, I'll do 150. There we go. Um, and then I think I'm going to leave it so that it has a background position of bottom. So it starts at the bottom. Oh, no, actually, no. That What if it starts at the top? I think maybe that's better. All right. Um, and then the card content, I'm actually, I'm actually going to go in here and put an H1 and say, like, I don't know, blog. Um, and then I'll put in a paragraph and say, like, lorem and put that in there, right? So now we have our card content, which is beautiful. Now, here's the thing. Now we start getting problems here. So the blue box is should like surround everything that's inside the card content and obviously it's not and that's because we set it with the height of 50 pixels so it's not going to stretch so really what we want is to have it a height of minimum content so that it reaches the height right of its minimum content um and then uh let's see we want more cards so what i'll do is i'll just grab this card here i'll make sure that i know where it ends and i'll just copy this two times where is it I'll just copy this actually one more time. And so now we're going to have two cards, but they're going to be on top of one another. And then notice that the black line, which is, uh, I have two black lines. Let's do purple. So the purple line is the grid. And notice that the grid is extending right to its minimum content, but the container is not. So what we really want is to have the height um, of the container be min content so it reaches all the way down beautiful but then at the same time we want the minimum height to be 100 vh so that it's actually responsive on mobile so we want it to be like the minimum it could be um is 100 vh so it can't go lower than that but at the same time it needs to be the minimum content um at all times if that makes sense okay um so then notice I don't want the cards to be on top of one another. I want them to be side by side. So what I'll do is I'll go to the grid and I'll just give it a display of grid. Da, da, da. And then that does nothing because I haven't specified the columns that I want. So grid template columns. And I can say 1FR, 1FR, and that's just going to separate the grid into two equally spaced columns, 1FR, 1FR. If I were to put 50%, 50%, that would be the same thing. Um, if I were to set the grid to have a width of 400, and then I would put 200 pixels here and 200 pixels here, that would be the same thing also. But this is kind of the idea. So then, now I have my cards side by side, which is perfect. And then here's the problem, though. If I shrink, the cards, you know, stay kind of side by side, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go down here and just add a media query. So I'll do media and then max width, let's say 800 pixels. And then I want the grid to change from having two columns to having one column. So I'll do one FR now. And so now if I just go here, right, and reach 800 pixels, it goes all the way down, which is perfect. So now it's like more responsive. 
Um, let me go ahead and open this up in debug mode so I can see what it's looking like. Um, so this is what's currently looking like. So obviously I want the grid to actually have 100% of, um, what would you call it? 100% of the container, so the height, and it currently ends at the middle, which is not what I want. So, um, whoops, I'll go here into the grid and give that a height, not of its minimum content, but 100% of the container that it's in. Hold up. Oh, that's why. Hmm. So let's do, actually, I could just literally do the same thing. Let's paste that in there. There we go. So here's a perfect example. So it's, I'm saying, hey, I want you to have a height of minimum content so you reach, you know, the end of the content. But at the same time, the minimum height that you can be is 100 BH. So, you know, it's still going all the way down, even though it's exceeding the height of the minimum content. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. So the cards, I want them to be in the center. So that's why I have the grid. So the grid, I need to actually be in the center. So what I, I'll do is I'll go to the container and give that a display of flex. And then I can do justify content center. And then align items center. Right. And that's going to center the grid in the middle here. Beautiful. Um, and then I probably should give this a width of 100% or a width of, let me try this. Hold on. Width of 100 WH. Let me save that, reload, see what that looks like. Minimum width. What about if I just do it? Hmm. Or not. Okay. Oh, it's because I was doing it. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, whatever. Anyway, back to the container. So justify, okay, display flex makes the container a flex container. And so everything inside a flex container becomes a flex item. And anything inside the container um, is what? The, the grid. So really the only flex item is the grid at the moment. And so because it's a flex item, I can say justify content center, and that's going to center the grid horizontally towards the center. And then align items is going to do it vertically towards the center. And the reason why it's not actually... Um, really really at the center is because huh is because of the height of the grid so if i were to remove let's say this and reload then it would actually be at the center but really i don't want um i don't want that or do i want that or do i not want that hmm. i'll actually leave it like that for now and then I'll probably okay, reload, but then I would need to have the grid display flex to go to have it like be downwards. And I don't think that's going to happen. So maybe instead of doing all of this, I could just grab the grid and give it a padding of 50 pixels. Hmm. Or would it be a margin of 50 pixels? Why is it not working? Okay, margin 50 pixels of the grid would make it so that it has 50 pixels on all sides. Oh, it's because I never spelt it right. Love that. Margin 50 pixels. There we go. Beautiful, but also not what I want. How would I fix this? Huh. You know what? I think for now, let me go back to the grid. Give it its display flex or whatever. So it's actually at the center. Um, no, it wasn't the grid. It was the uh, container, my bad. And then over here, get just comment this out for now and then see if we need it later. What now? Okay, there we go. So it's at the center. We'll see if we need that minimum height later. Um, okay, then... Yeah, that's literally it. So then to have the gap, really, I could just do gap 1EM. Not gap, that's flex. I'll have to do grid gap 1EM. So there's a space in between. And then... Um, 
I would probably go into the thumbnail and do, let's say, height 50%. And then with, uh, no, not with, where's the thumb, where's the card content? Okay. And instead of in content now, I'll just do 50%. So they're both literally taking 50% of the card. Right? Beautiful. And then that's literally it. So now let's move on to the actual like little button. Um, so I'll make sure that's actually inside the container still. So that would be here. So I'll do a div and I'll label, I'll give it an ID of button. And it literally just needs a plus sign, right? So no need for an icon. And then I can just go here into my CSS and start styling. So hashtag BT, no, hashtag button. And then first of all, I can give it a background and I'm just gonna give it like, let me use my color picker, give it something like this maybe, put that. in there okay and then obviously give it a height and width of 25 pixels so i'm actually able to see it and then give it a position of fixed and then bottom zero right zero so that it's here in the corner um, so position fix just makes it makes it so that it's always there at that specific spot, regardless of the container or whatever. Um, and then bottom zero, right zero means it's just gonna literally from the right, it's gonna be zero pixels, and from the bottom, it's gonna be zero pixel pixels. That's why it's at the bottom right corner. Anyway, um, then I would give it a border radius um of 50%, right? So that it's a circular, and then to have the um the plus sign in the middle, I'll just give it a display of flex and then justify content center and that's going to move it downwards, no, horizontally. So it's going to move it to the right and then align item center is going to move it downwards if I could spell it right. There we go. And then the color, we could change it to white so it's visible and then the font weight, just to make it a little bit thicker, we could do bold. Beautiful. Okay, that's it. So then let me look at it here. So it's what it's looking like. It's a little too far and I'll probably want to make this a lot bigger than it is now. So maybe 50 pixels and then 50 pixels. And then um, let's see. Then let me see what it's looking like. Right. Beautiful. And then I'll probably make it like, where is it? 16 pixels from the bottom. So it's a little bit more upwards and then so it's a little bit more to the left i'll do 16 pixels from the right so it moves it to the left right okay beautiful there we go and then obviously the last thing would be to make the plus sign a little bit bigger also i don't know what would it be 25 pixels or is that too much let's see that's good all right and then that's kind of it so this is the idea so when i have my little two blogs and i click on this plus sign it's going to add another one um, let me just make the cards a little bit bigger because I think right now, if I go to the card, I have a height of 400 pixels. What if I delete these? Okay, so maybe not delete it, but maybe make it, I don't know, double it, 600, 800, or maybe that would be way too much. Yeah, no, way too much. Okay, so how about 400 pixels and then 600 pixels? Where did this stuff go? Oh, here. All right, so that looks a little bit better. Okay, so then now let me work with the card content. So that is just really just going into here and giving this a padding of, let's say, 20 pixels. Right, and then I would just select the card content H1 and give it a margin bottom of 10 pixels so that there's spacing between the blog and the paragraph. And then what I would do is probably just um, make this a tiny bit bigger. So paste that in there, paste that in there.
Why is there two? I mean, why is there... Did I copy it two times? Okay. Now it's looking like that. Okay, and then that's it. So then now let me work with the JavaScript. So for JS, I'm just gonna pull this up. I'm gonna do variable, access the button, and then do document dot, and then use, I'll explain this in a second, get element by ID, and then I'll put in button. So really what I'm saying, I'm creating a variable in JavaScript button, and then I want that button to be this plus sign button, right? So I'm accessing the DOM. The DOM is the browser's copy of your HTML. Why is the browser making a copy of your HTML? Because JavaScript can only work with objects, hence JavaScript being an object-oriented programming language that can only work with objects. So your HTML elements need to become objects first before JavaScript can access them or work with them. So because of that, your browser makes a copy of your HTML elements into, you know, uh, a objects and that's called the DOM which in JS is referred to as a document and then from the document you can use a function called get element by ID to get any elements or in this case nodes or objects that have an ID of button so for me that would end up being this one over here which is the button right beautiful okay so then now I would want to create a function so variable on button click so what I would want to happen when I click on the button so I'm gonna do function and then I'm probably gonna do, let's see, parentheses, and then over here. And then what I want to happen is I want another card to appear. And so I'm actually gonna have to recreate this card over here. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna create a variable called new card, and I'm gonna set it to document.create element. And I'm going to say the element that I want to create, and that's going to be a div. And then what I'm going to do um, is I'm not going to rewrite all of this CSS again. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say new card dot class name, and I'm going to apply the class. Let's do plus equal or just equal. Um, what's the class name? Card. So then now I'm going to create a new card, right? And it's going to have the stylings of the card over here, which you know, it's going to have border, where did it go? Border five pixels, solid red, and a width of 400, height of 600, and so on and so on. Um, but then I actually need to make sure, it's created, right? But I need to make sure to position it within my HTML. So I'll have to do um, new card. No, I would have to actually get the grid. So I'll have to access that first because I want to add the card to the grid. So I have to access the grid. So document dot get element by ID grid so then let me make sure it has an idea of grid over here at the top so i'll give it an idea of grid and then i'll go back here and say okay i want the grid i want to append a child to that grid and that child is going to be the new card and then just have that there okay so then the next thing would be to add the card content also. I'm just literally recreating everything. So new variable, I'm gonna call it new card content. I'm setting it equal to document.create element. And again, it's gonna be a div because that's what it is in HTML. And then I'll say grid dot append. Actually, I would want this to be appended to the new card, not the grid because it is within the card and I'll just say new card content and then let's see new card content and then there we go so then I would also want it to have the same class as the other card contents have so I'll just access this and say class name and then do plus equal and then space and then I'll do card content. So really what this is saying, um, it's going to just create a new card content. And it's going to give it all of these styles here. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the H1. So variable new H1 equal to document dot create element. And this time it's going to be an H1 that's being created. 
Um, and then again, I would say I would want this to be inside the new card content. So I'll say new uh, card content append child and I'll append the new H1. And then I'll make sure that it has the new H1. Really, I never gave it a class. I think I just gave it a, a margin bottom of 10 pixels. So I'll do that manually. So I'll just say, okay, I'll access the CSS. So styles dot and then the CSS property, which is margin, and it's going to be camel casing. So we don't do exactly like margin bottom, we do margin bottom. All right, and then set that equal to anything, but in quotations, 10 pixels, there we go. And then I would also have to say, set the inner HTML to whatever I want. So I'm going to say blog, or just to make things different, I'll say new blog, exclamation point. And then the last thing would be the paragraph. So new paragraph, well, first of all, variable new P, set that equal to the document. I'm creating a new element in Lookout document. So that's the function. And then the element, so new P element, right? And then I'm saying, okay, I want this to be added to the card content. So I'm gonna say new card content dot append child, because I'm appending a child into it so it's gonna you know be part of the card content and I'm gonna say new P and then I'm going to just say I don't think I added any styles so I'll really just say new P dot inner HTML because that's inner HTML it's whatever like in your HTML it's this the white stuff you know the white text so I'm just gonna copy this and just paste that in there and then just end up with a semicolon save that right um and then i think that's it right that's literally it and then the whole thing is to call it because if right now i click on it nothing's going to happen because i haven't told it how to react so i'm going to create um not create i'm just going to take the button and add an event listener so it's going to take in two parameters so the way that it's good or like what's going what it's going to react to so that's going to be when i click on it and then what function is it going to call when i click on it and i want it to call this on button click function so it's in other words the button is listening for what it's clicked on and then when it's clicked on it's going to pass in this function on button click which is going to do all of this so it's going to create a new card it's going to add it to the grid it's going to apply it a class create a new card content and so on and so on so now let me see if i reload this and add a plus you can clearly see it works only thing is um the thumbnail is not working so probably because i spelled something wrong so let me make sure i spelled everything right so let's say new card content. Where's the thumbnail? Oh, it's because I never added a thumbnail, that's why. Okay, so where is it? Where is the card? Okay, so after the card content, which is over here, I have to add a thumbnail. So variable, new thumbnail, or just thumbnail equal to I'm gonna make sure I just grab this paste that in there and that's going to be that and then I'll just say I'll take in the card so new card and I'll say append child and put in the new thumbnail right and then I'll say new card no I'll say new thumbnail dot um class name and i'll give it a class of thumb so it's going to give it these styles over here the background the background size and whatnot whatnot okay so let me save that reload see what happens oh so it's doing the opposite so i wonder why that is all right so i think Something's wrong here, obviously. I think it's the order for which I did it. So let me just check. So the thumbnail, um, so the card content has to be above the, uh, oh, okay, because the thumbnail has to be above the card content, that's why. So let me add that here. Save that, reload. Beautiful, now it's fixed. And now we have to figure the problem as to why the H, the, the blog and heading are not showing up. So the new H1 um, styles
There we go. Okay, I just had to do style instead of styles. My bad, little typo there. And there we go. So now if I add, I, uh, I have a new, you know, I keep having new stuff here, which is perfect. Um, yeah, so then let me just make it pretty now. So let me go to CSS and just go to the container and give it a background of, I don't know, hashtag E six times. And then as for the cards, um, where is it? I'll give it a background of white. Reload, there we go. And then let me remove the borders of everything. So I'll do border, delete that, border, delete that. Um, and then a border over here to delete this over here, here, this too, um, save that, reload. Why is the background the same? Because I didn't spell it right. Great. There we go. So now it's different. Beautiful. So that's pretty much what it is. Um, and then let me do one more thing. So for the card, when I hover over it, so when it's in a state of hover, I want the position, um, relative to its, you know, previous position to go from the top negative two pixels when I hover over it. So now when I hover over it, it does that. So when I click on it, there's a new one also. Um, and then what I probably do need to do, um, is let me see, for the grid itself, let me go ahead and give it a border of five pixels solid black. Right, I would want it to have a certain width and height. So maybe, let's see, maybe the margin doesn't have to be 50 pixels. It could be 30. Let me see what that would look like. Not really much of a difference. Okay, so 50 pixels. And then I guess the reason is why, why is because we have two FRs. Nah, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I want to leave it like that and delete that. Yep, that's it for today then. Um, and then if I do this, oops, wrong stuff. Okay, and shrink it, it becomes responsive and everything works just fine. And the one thing I did want to say is that I haven't checked for mobile responsiveness, so it might not look, you know, it might not be mobile responsive, like 100%, but it is web responsive at least. Um, so yeah, and then if I click on it again, it's just going to add a new card, a new card, and whatever. Um, and then one bonus tip I guess I could do is if I want to, you know, specify, you know, what I, if I want the user to, you know, put their blog name and the paragraph, I could just go to JS and do something slightly different. So I can go to the H1 and instead of doing all this, I can just create a variable called, um, H1 input, set that equal to prompt and then ask blog title. And that's just gonna ask the user for its blog title. And so I could just go ahead and copy this and just set this equal to this now, and then save that and reload. And so now when I click on it, it's gonna ask me for my blog title and I can just say, um, I don't know, cat blog. And then now it's gonna say cat blog. And if I wanna do the same thing for the paragraph, I can do the same thing for the paragraph. So now I can just go here and say, I don't know, variable, new P, let's say input, set that equal to prompt, which is going to prompt the user for an answer. I'm going to say enter or like haste blog or something. And then set this new variable to be, you know, whatever the user inputs here. So then create that. So I'm going to say blog about ships and then ships are awesome and then i'll get a blog about ships and then ships are awesome right so that's just one little extra thing and that's it for today i'm gonna go now bye